Eric, what is the role of meditation in prayer and how do you use, utilize it? Well, once I've crossed into an inclination from the Lord, I have a directive from Him. Then it needs to be mauled. It needs to be chewed on. And as I chew on it, the juices begin to come out of it and I can receive from that thing. I believe meditation is the way to revelation. And so he'll, as he begins to give the inclination that he wants me to look at, I'll mull it over, look at it, twist it, turn it. And as I do, the juices come out and I'm able to receive revelation from that thing. So when you say inclination, what you're talking about is first you've gone into a place of, of worship and of yes. just setting your heart on the Lord. And in that place, you get some sort of specific leading from the Holy Spirit. And that's the thing that you set your attention on and you mull it over. Yes. And that's what you meditate on. So you're not just definitely. randomly picking a verse and thinking about it a lot. Right, definitely. And if I was to look at a chapter, there would be something that jumps out, mm. highlighted by the Spirit, and I would take that to Him and begin to think it through with the Lord in His presence. Let the presence soak it up. Do you do, you do this like every time you go before the Lord, or is this you know, something that's just part of a spiritual repertoire? Well, uh, it's hard for me to come to the Lord without coming to the Bible, you know, but mo most people come to the Bible without coming to the Lord. But um, sometimes there's nothing. I don't get any inclination. Um, but I know, even though, it's not, uh, even though it's not intelligible what's happening, I know that it's indelible. And this is what's most important to me, is the, indel the indelible work of the Spirit in my life. So yeah. even if there's no Spe specific leading. Right. Is that a problem? No. Or you just, it no. doesn't wor worry you at all? It doesn't worry me. As a matter of fact, I had to break that in myself because I was constantly wanting to leave with something. Hmm. And I would come out sometimes of a day spending time with the Lord. My wife would say to me, what did he say? And literally, there wasn't much to say to, say to her. But I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt I was different. And I couldn't really put my finger on it. So it was an indelible work of the Spirit. could not be taken away from me though it was not necessarily intelligible at that moment. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned something in one of our previous conversations where you're talking about how at one point you became so interested in seeing something in prayer yeah. that it actually distracted you from the real purpose of prayer, which is God himself. Yeah. You think the same thing applies here that uh, meditation, mm -hmm. although it's a tool and it's powerful and it's something that God uses, if that becomes, if that overshadows the real purpose of why we're there, then it can, it can be a disadvantage. Yes, I believe anything can eclipse presence. Uh, and they're all, many of them are positive, but presence must be center, front and center, because presence is person. There isn't a scalpel thin enough to separate Christ and his presence. And so I believe with all my heart that presence should be the platform and the empowerment and the purpose of prayer.